Welcome to Wealth Plan TV. Uh, today we're talking about estate planning and we're joined by Scott Amberley from Legal Essentials. Hi Scott, how are you? Good, Kerry. That's good. Uh, Scott, can you tell us please what estate planning is? Uh, estate planning is the process that usually happens when the, the process on getting a will done and getting a will then probated or without a will if you pass. So usually the process on dying, around dying, okay. estate planning, yeah. So that was a nice simple statement, but there's lots of terms there we probably need to clarify. Yes. Dying, I think we probably understand. Yes. Um, probate, what's probate mean? Probate is the process that takes an original will, original signed will to the Supreme Court of whichever state you're in, so Victoria for us, and that original will is then stamped by the court uh, and the process is started. Okay, so if somebody has a will yep. and uh, they want to execute it, yep. they have to get a stamp saying that they're authorised to do that? Yes, by the Supreme Court. And that's called probate? That's called probate. And is that easy to do? Uh, <laughs> yes and no. It can be very easy if it's a very straightforward estate uh, and there's no dramas with the will and how it's been created and how it's been signed. Okay. Um, let's just deal with one other term if we can before we get a little bit more meat. What does intestate mean? Intestate is dying without a will. Okay. Uh, and if somebody dies without a will, you, do you need a stamp? No, you do, you do what's called intestacy. Okay. So intestacy is the same application and the same process, except it's uh, instead of the executor is appointed by a will, so somebody within the family or within the friends needs to apply to the court to be to get the what's called the letters of administration okay so if you die with a will you need a stamp which is called probate yep if you die without a will you still need a stamp but it's called letters of administration, administration. yep sometimes you can get away with not needing probate if it's a small estate and there is not enough cash or there is no property in there then some you, sometimes you can ask the banks nicely if they don't have to have probate. Okay. Uh, and if it's below a certain threshold for set bank, then you can get away with it, and not needing probate. So um, we might come back here, but what I really wanted to touch is um, why would somebody actually need a will? So we've already discovered that uh, somebody's estate can be processed without a will through intestacy. And why would somebody actually need a will? I guess wills cost money, so why would somebody pay to have one? Well, there's the loaded question. Um, look, it's about whether what's important for you and what's important to you goes to where you want it to, in the way you want it to, in the most tax efficient manner. And that's, there's the rub, because it can pass in a really tax inefficient manner um, and it can pass to people you didn't ever want it to go to. And a will says who it goes to, when it goes to, where it goes to and how it goes to. Uh, and those are the things that are really, I mean, if you've got stuff that's important to you, then you, you really need to have your say on where it's going. Okay, so um, th there's more than wills, isn't there? There's powers of attorney. Can you tell us first what a power of attorney is? Power of attorney is a document that allows somebody when they've lost capacity, so they're here, but they're not, they're, yep. they're missing. Um, they've lost the marbles. Um, so power of attorney, enduring power of attorney starts, so it comes into effect then uh, and well for each state that are actually operating under different sets of laws here in Victoria there is medical, financial and guardianship so there's okay. the three different we'll, ones. We'll come to those in a sec. Again we've got to pick up a term, so uh, your technical term was losing the marbles but yep. it's actually called what, loss of testamentary capacity? Incapacity, somebody yeah. loses capacity. Now. It's not like, sorry Kerry, you, you've lost capacity. Um, it's a doctor says, sorry Kerry, you've lost capacity. So you might be in the room, but they're probably not talking to you. Okay, let's uh, come back and see if we can land it a little bit more simply then. So uh, powers of attorney, there yep. are a number of types. Can you tell us what a general power of attorney is and where it would be used? A general power of attorney would be used if, let's say, you were going overseas. And so you were going overseas for a couple of weeks to, you know, Thailand. And a general power of attorney will come into effect for that limited time. Okay. So you've got capacity, 
but there's there's you just can't sign off so you're settling your house yes um, but you can't be here for settlement but somebody needs to sign off on that a general power of attorney can be appointed to do that for that specific time okay if i was overseas before the general power of attorney acted on my behalf and i was hit by a car and put in a coma could they act for me no okay the so, the secret word there is enduring Okay. It's not an enduring power So the attorney. difference between a general power of attorney then is that the person granting a general power has to retain legal capacity. Yes. Yet if you grant an enduring power, then that can the person who's granted the power can act when the grantee has not got capacity. That's correct. Okay. So a general power of attorney is only useful for temporary things. An enduring power is the sort of thing you add with a will. Yeah. Enduring, and enduring powers of attorney, I've always told that, are set and forget. Yep. You do them once, you hope you don't need them, but the point is an enduring power of attorney, I mean, I tell everybody they're like, they're like insurance. Um, I hope your house never burns down, but you pay for insurance hoping your house never burns down, that you've got it just in case your house burns down. And enduring power of attorney is like that, but for your mind, they're hoping that, I hope you never need it, because if you do need it and you can't and you don't have it, then it can be an extraordinary expense to go get. Yeah, that's right. Um, I've dealt with clients who didn't have powers of attorney and we had to deal through estate body, uh, sorry, state bodies who would authorise every action and that was very slow and costly. Yeah, yeah. Okay, medical powers of attorney, if we've got a, an enduring power of attorney, why would we need a medical power? Well, an enduring power of attorney, there is only, there is three of them, so the financial, medical and guardianship. Okay. Financial is the one we've been talking about, making financial decisions. A medical power of attorney comes into effect if you're put on life support. Who makes the decision for you? Now, a lot of the time you go, maybe you might not need it because there might be a whole problem with your family not, not actually needing it because everybody agrees what's going to happen if Kerry's put on life support. Mm -hmm. But if one person disagrees, then we've got an issue. Or if somebody in the family disagrees with what medical procedure we're going to do to you, then we've got an issue. If somebody thinks that, sorry, Kerry, we've, you know, you've had a car accident, we need to take off your right arm. Somebody says, well, no, we're not going to do that. The medical power of attorney is the one that really is appointed to make those decisions um, on your behalf. There is one limitation to a medical power of attorney. You can't change somebody's fertility. Oh, that's a shame. You can't change, male or female, you cannot change their fertility. Everything else you can do as far as body-wise for them, so this the Jehovah's Witnesses have an issue with um, having blood transfusions. Yes, of course, yeah. So they, a lot of them all have the medical power of attorney appointed so that that can make the decision on their behalf. Okay, finally guardianship. Why, we've got medical, why do we need a guardianship power? Guardianship is the everything else one. Guardianship is the, um, I've lost capacity, somebody is my parent. Somebody is appointed, guardianship is essentially saying somebody's gonna be my parent. Um, and they're going to decide where I live, what sort of care I get, who gets to look after me, what sort of work I do, where I can work, and who gets to visit me. Okay. So, and there's a lot of decisions around that, and there's a lot of places that will not take you unless somebody, if you've lost capacity and you need to be put in somewhere to look after you, mm. a lot of those places will not take you unless they've got a bit of paper saying where the buck stops. And that's important to them that, you know, I need to know who's responsible for you. You've lost capacity. Who's going to be responsible for you? And that's what a guardianship power of attorney will do. Okay. Um, we've had a brief introduction to estate planning. I guess we're all familiar with what a will is. But we've learned it's a little bit more than a will, haven't we? We've got, uh, we've got the ability to handle estates without wills, but it's messy and possibly expensive. We've got the ability to handle uh, people losing capacity without, without powers of attorney, enduring in preference. But again, it's messy and costly and generally it costs you options. Uh, Scott has indicated some care facilities won't take you unless somebody is ultimately responsible. So with estate planning we now know that we need a will, we need enduring powers of attorney in finance, medical and guardianship. Isn't that wonderful? Thank you. See you after the break.